There's nothing more satisfying than moving a project to done. So is there anything worse than doing rework on something that you've already finished? But refactoring is an essential part of building a product. Let's break down what it is and why rework maybe isn't so bad. Dirty code is the result of inexperience, hard deadlines, mismanagement, shortcuts, and working with unknowns during the development process. Clean code is easy to read, understand, and maintain. It makes development predictable and boosts the quality of the product. How do we get from dirty code to clean code? Refactoring is the process of improving code without creating new functionality. It can turn a mess into a clean and simple design. The risk here is that changing code may inadvertently alter functionality, so it's important to have step-by-step -step testing to ensure refactoring changes are predictable and safe. What are the objectives of our refactoring? Things should be obvious for other programmers to read. That doesn't mean the code can't be complex, but things like naming should be clear and consistent. Duplicated code should be put into functions, stored procedures, methods, and so on. Any hard-coded values should be handled dynamically, and excess code should be removed and simplified where possible. The best way to know it needs to be refactored is to keep track of every time somebody complains about it. When someone has to fix a bug, make an enhancement, or a new employee is just trying to learn, don't ignore any complaints they have about working with the code. Make sure to note them down somewhere like a backlog, so when it's time to do some cleanup, you can take the most common complaints and focus on those. If you're struggling to know when to put the time into refactoring, try this. The first time, get the project done and deployed. Get some feedback and learn some lessons. The second time you work on the code, note down the pain points. And then the third time, be sure to schedule in some time to refactor the items you noted previously. If you're working on something written by someone else, usually when they're not around anymore to guide you, try to refactor some items you learn. It's really helpful for those who learn by being hands-on. You can also refactor while cleaning up bugs, though often there's pressure to get the bug fixed quickly, so it isn't always the best time. As a note, refactoring doesn't only apply to code like Python scripts. It can be SQL, database structures, cloud platform infrastructure, pipeline design, low-code tools, and reports as well. It's important not to take on too much at once. It can be tempting, but you don't want to turn refactoring into a ground-up redesign, unless that's decided what's best and it can be properly scoped out and planned for. Now for an example. You were tasked with ingesting data for a report. They needed it immediately, and there wasn't a lot of detail. You took the source CSV files, wrote a Python script to ingest them into your data warehouse, made some views to provide the fields requested, and built a Power BI report to display the values. But after releasing it, seeing what the users actually want, and getting a better understanding of the data, you see a number of areas that could be cleaned up. First, there's some complex DAX being done in Power BI that bogs down the refresh speed. You can move some of the logic into SQL views being referenced. Second, the file contains some field names that conflict with common business usage. You can rename them in the views to make it consistent for future reports built off the dataset. Third, with a better understanding of the data, you see where the data can be modeled into facts and dimensions to have an optimal star schema for reporting. Fourth, you miss some useful data types on ingestion, converting the strings from a CSV into integers, decimals, and so on. Fifth, your Python script has some duplicate code for each of the CSV files that can be simplified into a function with parameters. And sixth, your pipeline was scheduled to run daily, but now you're constantly being asked, why is the data out of date? So you change it to update hourly. Now you need to decide if you want to make all these changes together and release a new version, or if you want to do one, test it, make the change, and then repeat until everything is done. This will probably depend on your team's style. How likely are you to get the time to make all the changes at once? or will you need to fit them in between other tasks? But either way, you wanna make sure you have ample testing. The report has already been validated as correct by the users, so you need to make sure the report doesn't change. You want testing done across the whole process. Test cases in Python to make sure the scripts are performing as expected, test cases in SQL to ensure data warehouse matches between versions, and a test report to validate against the active report. That brings us to the hardest part of refactoring, the motivation to do the rework. A lot of people are just eager to move on to the next cool feature because that's what they enjoy, that's what their users and product managers want, or because that's what's most likely to lead to their next promotion. So you can try making refactoring into a challenge, optimize for the speed of the pipelines, decrease data latency, reduce costs on your cloud compute, make it a fun challenge for yourself, but also keep track of statistics to show the value your work is bringing. Personally, I enjoy cleaning code and refactoring more than creating new features. While a lot of engineering is done with teams and a variety of roles taking part in collaboration, refactoring is something that can be defined, scoped, planned, and executed by just the development team. 
which can be a nice break from a lot of meetings and discussions that go into new work. Comment below if you prefer refactoring or to build something new. And be sure to watch this video next for ideas on how you can refactor your data pipelines to the highest level.